الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد الأنبياء والمرسلين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد يقول الله عز وجل ربنا وجعلنا مسلمين لك ومن ذريتنا أمة مسلمة ذريتنا أمة مسلمة لك وأرنا مناسكنا وتب علينا إنك أنت التواب الرحيم ربنا وبعث فيهم رسولا منهم يطلو عليهم آياتك ويعلمهم الكتاب والحكمة ويزكيهم إنك أنت العزيز الحكيم Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in this verse Our Lord, make us devoted to you Make our descendants into a community devoted to you Show us how to worship and accept our repentance For you are ever repenting You are the most merciful Our Lord Make a messenger of their own rise up from among them to recite your revelations to them. Teach them the scripture and wisdom and purify them. You are the mighty, the wise. And if we look at this dua of Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam, it's interesting when we see when did he make this dua. This messenger, this noble man, Alayhi salatu wassalam, after being kicked out of his village, being shunned by his father, being tested with the ruler in the neighboring town and being kicked out of there. So imagine being removed from your home, then going and seeking refuge, and then being removed from there and moving into a completely foreign land of Palestine. So he was shifted from one place where his father threatened to burn and to kill him. And then from there, he moved north with his wife where the ruler of that land took his wife from him. And it was only from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's protection that he was not able to take her and to keep her. And from that, what happened? That same individual, he gifted Ibrahim alayhi salam, Hajr. And now all of them moved to this new land of Philistine. And it didn't stop there. Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam, he aged, hoping for children. His youth passed, and he reached elderly age, and his wife Sarah now, old and barren, they receive a message, some messengers come to sit with them. Some angels come and sit down with them, and they say, we give you glad tidings of a son. And she laughs. She's like, what are you talking about? Do you, do you, see, do you see me, and do you see how old I am? And they said, this is what your Lord wants. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed him with a son. And he also blessed him with a son from Hajr. And then there was jealousy from Sarah toward Hajr. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam, a man who has moved now once, twice, thrice, say, okay, you need to take and you need to leave your family in this land, Mecca, that is completely barren. And if we look at all of these different migrations and movements, there's never a time where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about the frustration of Ibrahim. There's never a time where we see or we hear from Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam, Ya Allah, bas tabitni, allow me to stay here. Please don't make me move again. Please don't force me to change this land. In the moment Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered him, said, listen, you need to go to Mecca. He alayhi salam, he got up, he took Hajar, he took Ismail and he said, look, we're going. And when he went, he left them. He turned around. He started walking away. And Hajar, she asked him, she said, she said where, where are you going? And he kept going. And she said, did your Lord order you to do this? And he didn't want his heart to sway, so he didn't turn around. And he said, yes. And she said, then our Lord will not leave us. And he went back now to Palestine. And this is not a short journey. This is not a short trip. But we find him again returning back, migrating once, twice, thrice, four times. Only able to check on his son very inconsistently because of the distance. He, alayhi salam, was tested with his personal family, he was tested with his father. He was tested with the political leaders. He was tested with his wife 
And now he's tested with his child. How many of us complain about our relationships? How many of us complain about our fathers or our wives or our children? And if we look at him, alayhi salatu wassalam, what does he do in all of this? He makes the dua that we started the khutbah with. That, ya Allah, the only thing I want, I don't want wealth. I don't want a nice home. I don't even want to stay in one place. <laughs> After moving all around, you would imagine that this individual who faced such hardship and difficulty and was moved around place to place. Just imagine that we settle in a space we buy a home, and then one day, it's like, okay, you need to leave. We manage. We figure it out. We get up. We go. We settle again. We get a knock. It's like, no, time to go again. Then we go to this third place and be like, okay, nope, not here either. What would be the amount of frustration that each one of us would face had we been forced to move from place to place to place to place to place? And who does Ibrahim والسلام, make du'a for? He makes du'a for his children. That's all. He doesn't make du'a to stay in this place or to be raised in that place. He makes du'a that he stays steadfast and firm. And he makes du'a that his children be raised upon piety and they themselves become models for those after them. So we need to ask ourselves, where is our vision what are we seeing and what are we doing? We have this lesson in this beautiful messenger, alayhi salatu wasalam, of the efforts that he put forward and the investments that he made in his future. And for him, his investment wasn't wealth. It wasn't a home. It wasn't staying in a space. It was his children. And we know the legacy of his children and how after them there was a prophet after prophet after prophet after prophet. And from that same lineage, from the sons of Ismail, came our beloved messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So we know what the effect of that dua was. And we know what the fruit of that dua was. And we know what the fruits of those efforts were. So what efforts are we making and what lessons are we taking? And if we're looking at his life and we understand the hardship and the difficulty that he faced, and I know that all of us in this room have faced hardship and difficulty in some way, shape, or form. I know there were times where we opened the fridge and we worry because we're like, how are we going to finish the, how are we going to have a meal today? I know there are times where we get a bill in the mail and we're wondering and we're inside we're struggling, like, how are we going to pay this? Or we get into the car frustrated because the level is on E, and we're like, I don't know how I'm going to make it to work. Or our car won't start. Or we get a flat tire. Or we get a hospital bill. How many of us have faced all of these challenges and all of these difficulties? We don't know where we're going to live. We don't know where we're going to move. We don't know how we're going to settle. How many of us can share stories that they got off the plane, they landed, all they had was like $20 in their pocket? But what did we do with those challenges? And what did we do with those difficulties? Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam, he looked back on all of those hardships and all of those difficulties and all of those challenges and he said, may Allah bless the next generation. May Allah bless my children. May Allah make them leaders. And he invested in them. How did he invest in them? And how did he bring them up? Because it's not just du'a, right? Du'a is definitely part of the equation. But that is not the only effort that needs to be made. And if we look at his individual interactions with Ismail alayhi salatu wasalam, we find one, even though they are few, that we hear of. We see trust. We see advising. Right? We, we don't see a lot of commanding. When we see the relationship between Ibrahim and Ismail, it, it really is a beautiful relationship in the sense that this is, this is what I saw, what do you think? 
I, I advise you to, to do this. I think that this is better for you. How many of us engage with our children in this way? He treated his son like an adult. And his son, he became pious, he became trusting. Anything his father told him, he would accept it. And how many of us complain about our relationships with our children? Well, how come my child isn't like Ismail? And the answer is very easy. Because we're not acting like Ibrahim. If I want my child to be obedient, if I want my child to listen, if I want my child to trust me, then I have to also respect my child. If I teach my son and daughter respect, then they will know how to respect me. If, but if I'm constantly commanding them, and I'm constantly telling them, and I'm constantly yelling at them, and I'm not saying these don't have a place. Are there times where my child deserves to be yelled at? Absolutely. Are there times where my child deserves to be commanded? Yes, absolutely. But that should not be the norm. We, we have to get into dialogue and discussion. It will help our child develop their capacity as well. If they understand that we talk to them in a certain way, they will know how to respond in a certain way. But sitting down and said, hey, listen, you did this, this, and this. Why did you do that? Sitting down with them and asking them, you did this, what do you think an appropriate punishment would be? You, when you did this, you broke my trust. When you did this, you hurt me. But we're very quick to hurt them emotionally, verbally, sometimes physically. And again, I'm not saying yelling doesn't have a place. I'm not saying chastising doesn't have a place. They definitely do. But that should not be the go-to and that should not be my number one choice. My number one choice is just like what we see between Ibrahim alayhi salatu salam and his son Ismail alayhi salam is mutual respect. So we need to learn how to respect our children so that our children learn how to respect us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us respectful and may He make our children respectful. Wa qulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum nisa'il muslimin kulli dhamm al khati'a innahu huwal ghafur rahim. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. والصلاة والسلام على سيد الأنبياء والمرسلين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد يقول الله عز وجل وإذ قال إبراهيم رب أذني كيف تحيي الموتى قال أولم تؤمن قال بلى ولكن ليطمئن قلبي Over here is a huge lesson for us as well That mutual respect is definitely part of that relationship But this statement of Ibrahim alayhi salam Where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says And when Ibrahim said My Lord, Ya Rabbi Show me how you give life to the dead. He said, do you not believe? Ibrahim, he said, absolutely, I do. But just to put my heart at rest. And if we look at this question superficially, it's almost like a challenge to Allah. And this is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala questions him. And he asks him, he said, what, you don't believe? I, I, tell, I'm, I told you that I bring life to the dead. He said, no, no, I, I believe in that. I, I just need to see how because it will put my heart at rest. It will give me yaqeen. It will give me, give me conviction. And I always found this amazing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala never suppressed or stopped Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam curiosity. And having a prophet Subhanallah, not a person, right? Not, not me and you. Having a prophet who is curious and who asks questions and wants to understand and how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he doesn't tell him no, you have no right to ask, right? Had Allah willed, he could have said no, you have no right to ask, you, uh, you, have, to, so you have to listen, you have to obey. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also uh, tells him, he said no, okay, here, you want to see? Take these birds, tear them apart, put them on different parts of the mountain and then you'll understand and then you'll see. And this is a huge lesson for me. That Allah wants me 
to, and he encourages me to ask questions. Because it is through those questions that my iman and my yaqeen will increase. And guess what? Who asks the most questions? Our children. Are we helping them answer those questions or not? And many times, we're shy because we don't know the answer. But it's fine. I don't need to know the answer to everything. That's not my job. My job as a father is not to be the answer to everything. My job as a father and as a mother is to help my child get the answer. I don't need to have it, but I need to help them get the answer. And what does that mean? It means, you know what? That's a good question. Let's go ask the imam. Let's go ask Sheikh so-and-so. Let's go ask this professor. Let's go ask. And it, it becomes a learning opportunity for me as a parent because what am I doing in teaching my child? I'm teaching my child how to be humble. So if we want to talk about our relationships, just looking at Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam, how he teaches respect, how he teaches humility, and how he teaches where to go when we have questions. So are we allowing, number one, ourselves to ask questions? Because we should. We have every right to ask is it necessary that there are always going to be an answer? No. And we have questions like that. Why is Salat al Jum'ah two rak'ah and Salat al Dhuhr is four? I don't know. Right? There are some things we just don't know. There might be some wisdoms that we can come around, but there are certain things that are clear. Why is alcohol prohibited? Because it prevents someone from making sound decisions. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is very clear in that. So some things we will have answers for, and some things we won't. But the one thing that will not be stopped and prevented is asking. So are we encouraging our children to ask? And if, if we look at the data, is it, you know, 25% of Muslims are leaving Islam every year. And I feel that a majority of that is because we didn't allow them to ask. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us open-hearted. May He make us humble. May He make us respectful. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to have mercy on all of those who have passed. I ask Him especially to accept our martyrs and our brothers and sisters that are being genocided in Gaza. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala raise their rank. May He protect them. May He bring it to a successful close. Ameen. I ask Him to give shifa, to give healing to all of those who are ill. I ask Him to help those who are in any type of financial hardship out of that hardship. I ask Him to help those who are in debt out of that debt and I ask him Azza wa Jal to gather us in his paradise wa aqim as-salah